welcome back to the program. You're watching Morning Thailand with Tulip and Golf. Mm -hmm. And like before we went on a break, we told you to have some uh, news about the Thai people that got abducted in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So apparently the just on we first heard about this on Sunday, mm -hmm. but we don't have much information about it. Just the uh, uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry has came out and said that they received this news. So mm -hmm. today we have the name for you of those people that got abducted. Mm -hmm. um, this name released by the uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry. Uh, the f all four people worked for Pomida Company for uh, in Israel. And um, right now the family is contacting the company to try to find more details because they still haven't get any information on what actually all this pirate, they, they believe it's, it's, pi it's done by pirate oh, people. Right. So they're not sure uh, whether what are these Nigerian pirates want, but of yeah, course- The we, situation we in Nigeria at yeah. this time is not very good. Cause obviously. we would assume that it's they're probably gonna hold some ransom mm -hmm. for some ransom. Anyway, so those four names are Mr. Panpinit Sommoho, uh, Mrs. Butsaya Si Panya, Mr. Chayan Thai Chompu, and Mr. Bun Tian. And they don't know the last name of the last one, but um, I, I think you get pretty good idea of uh, who they are because they're working with the same company. So mm -hmm. if the family uh, haven't get contact yet, please contact the company right. itself um, or just contact the foreign affair ministry. So that's that's actually all the information we have. Mm -hmm. Even despite the fact that you know we we try to wait for for the information to come in, but unfortunately, I guess the the foreign ministry themselves did not know much about it because um, for some odd reason they haven't contacted in terms of trying to get a ransom what would they like and such and but we hope that um, this is an abduction and you know they are still alive um, the foreign affairs ministry is right now coordinating with Nigerian embassy and the Israel embassy in Thailand mm -hmm. so uh, I, I Hopefully they'll be alive because at the end of the day, these people just want money. Money, and yeah. And if all their victim is dead, there's no use for it. Exactly. So we'll give you more updates on that particular case. Now moving on to the cases here in Thailand, and of course um, there has been a lot of report. Police try to do a lot of things. Um, apparently yesterday there has been a p announcement mm. that um, there will be a collaboration between the uh, Metropolitan Police Bureau and the TOT public mm. company to try to work together and they are currently creating the software as well as a system, a safety system mm -hmm. in place to help the police um, catch all the thieves easier as well as preventing all the thieves from actually going into your house. Now they call this particular project Miracle Eyes. And of course, like I said, um, there has been an announcement yesterday saying that um, at this point you are uh, actually can re you can register into this particular program in 140 branches of TOT company and what you will get is that you will have the CCTV cameras installed in and around of your house and with the expense of 300 baht per month. Mm -hmm. Now they say that at this point they are launching the first 100,000 of the CCTV cameras around the city so um, at this point, if you live in the provinces, this has not expanded there yet. But it's just going to be within the, the capital city for now, just to see. Now, what these can do, this particular project, is that they have the three types of software in place. Um, the first one is to um, alert the police when the intruder actually get into your homes because that way um, they will see from the CCTV cameras as well. And the second one is to um, warn as well as alert the, ch the, the police when you are not at home because there will be a CCTV camera um, installed around your house. So that way if they have seen, if the police see some the intruders try to break into your house, they can get there right away. And the last one is the rate line where they call it the rate line system mm -hmm. where you will be sleeping in the house, you will 
turn this particular uh, software on and of course I think it's probably pretty much like any you know house security system where you actually put on the alarm mm. and if you're sleeping and obviously you're not moving very much but if there's a tamper to your windows or your mm. door and such it will alert the police as well as you right away so it's like motion sensor kind of i guess because they say it what if you times. have like three big dogs running around the house well i think this one is probably for well because the thing is they i've seen this you know in in other countries before uh. where uh, you can actually move around the house that's fine because otherwise it's ridiculous what if you have to go to a bathroom but i think if you your doors or your windows are right. tampered then the sensor will actually um, alert you right away and i guess um, there's always like one of those beep alarm anyways uh -huh. that you can have you have to press the the code the thing though that uh confused me a little is that um how like private would this right. be True. you know like it's secured obviously because the police will look after us but then you know are, are we having any kind of privacy what kind of thing are right they? what actually they are it's a kind of thin line between the privacy and um, civilian yeah camera exactly so i'm not sure but at this point they say that if you're interested in like they did not provide much information mind you um they just say that it's going to cost you 300 baht per month um hopefully we'll hear a little bit more about this particular project because it seems like something very very good um they say it's cost them about 35 million baht for this particular uh, mm. project to before it's launched so let's hope that we'll see something good out of this um mm. if i hear more i will tell you more whether or not you know that's going to be a, a, a violation of our privacy like how much the police going to see that would be interesting yeah i, I don't think i want them to see much what's inside my house exactly <laughs> so you know you, you gotta pick and choose i guess so okay go. so next news mm -hmm. um last is it last week last week we reported yeah. about this um brian groom to be that somehow f fought mm -hmm. and uh, the guy ended up shot the girl to death and also yeah the mother of the bride to be and he fled Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, the police able to arrest him on Sunday, and mm -hmm. they make the press conference yesterday about all the detail. So um, the suspect name is Tanet or Yosepon Hakan. They didn't say why he has two first names. So strange. Thirty-seven years old. He normally work as the uh, van driver, the minivan driver. They able to arrest him apparently in Cambodia. Oh, so um, I guess he's not going out traveling. After five days of searching, um, the police able to track him from Chonburi to Bangkok, Bang uh, Bangkok to Sake. Actually, Chonburi to Petburi and Petburi to Bangkok and Bangkok to Sake. And he was trying to sneak into Cambodia. Apparently, he's already at Cambodia, and the police um, got notified and pick him up mm -hmm. and bring him immediately back to bangkok he confessed though to the crime that he shot um his really you need a confession because you know it's quite obvious seriously it was all i'm not camera. sure if he can deny it but mm. the police said he confessed that he really shot um his then fiance and her mother mm -hmm. and this is the reason out of jealousy right of course but because his fiance like to chat with people through Facebook too much, especially the owner Seriously. of the modified auto modified shop that they went to talk. Mm -hmm. um, they apparently they all friends. Like the suspect is friends with the uh, the husband, the owner of the uh, modified shop, and the uh, bride, Miss Gavelin, uh, was a good friend with the wife. But mm -hmm. uh, somehow the suspect found that Gavelin has been talking a lot on Facebook to the husband of her friend, the owner of this auto uh, sh auto modified shop. So they want to, they wanted to went there. Uh, they wanted to go there to have a talk. Okay. Apparently, while talking, of course, they have some fight going on. He said that. Um, she at one point she said that she regret sleeping with him oh so that's when he just lost it so 
but they're gonna get married. This is so weird. Anyway, he just took out his gun right. and shot her, and and the police asked why he has to shoot the mother. He said the mother always tried to tell his fiance to just broke up with him, and asked for. He said mm. they were gonna get married anyway, and uh, he talked about dowry. That five hundred thousand baht dowry is a lot for him already. And then uh, the mother of the bride also asked him to promise to buy a car for the little sister of the bride. Okay. And he said he's also have to buy that car, but on the way to it, have a, it's, it's a, seems like it's a lot of pressure for uh, people getting married. Right. And uh, a lot of well, you have a choice. A lot to be committed <laughs> financially, mm -hmm. and he just bought a house too in Chonburi. Okay. So for him, it's anxiety plus jealousy, but uh, I don't think it's still enough to actually yes, kill anyone. Yes, I don't know. Over. It's not justified or killing anyone. Exactly. But you can walk away if, if you don't like what you see. And then police asked why he danced to the camera yeah. and why, why he didn't that kill. That was horrible. Why he didn't kill the owner of the shop mm. when he said it's you know he's jealous of them. He said because the owner of the shop is good friend of his. I guess not good enough as the fiance. That's why he didn't kill him. Oh. And he didn't know there was a CCTV there to record his action and he said he just did the dance out of the stress really i thought he like even looked into the camera and said all he this, said like he didn't know that there's camera there right so anyway he wouldn't get bailed that's what the police said he should not get bailed all right let's move on to another news that's just not good news at all like that's horrible um another not so good news is that of course uh, we have been reporting about a lot of heavy rain and it seems like Mesot district of Thai province has seen quite a bit of this particular rain now they say that yesterday um, there has been a report early in the morning mm -hmm. um, at 1 a.m saying that after long hours of raining of heavy rain um, the situation in Massot district was actually worsened at the time for several of the communities because at the you know they they were located in the low-lying area so it after several hours of heavy rain, they ended up, the water has risen to 70 centimeters and all the residents have to put their belongings to the higher grounds quite quickly. And worse than that, um, the flash flood actually hit um, the Tesaban Wachumpon Kiri school. So that school has to be closed down as well. A lot of the um, rescue teams have to go into the area and try to help all the residents to put their stuff in the higher ground. Um, there were a lot of situations, especially um, with the metropoli uh, Metrological Department has came mm. out and warned of this particular typhoon that is hitting Thailand, Utor they call it. Um, they say that this is actually coming from the Sulan Island of uh, Philippines and they say that they believe that they, it's going to hit um, the sh uh, hit Hailam uh, island of China very very soon and obviously the Hainan I believe um, in, in English term there mm -hmm. um, very very soon and they say that this will obviously we will see a little bit of um, effect or impact from this particular Utor um, typhoon and especially in the north and northeast and we have been reporting already about the Mangkut uh, typhoon that mm -hmm. is hitting there so they say that this is almost like a little bit of a part of it, mm. you know, whether or like not the they tail can of Bangkok. Yeah, so we're at this point, let's just say that um, if you're in Chiang Mai, if you're in Chiang Rai, Park, anywhere that um, north and northeast, mm. you have to be very, very careful. And also in the south, they say that heavy wind, uh, the wind actually create a lot of high waves as well. Mm. So it seems like Weather-wise, we're not do, doing very well either. I mean, in Bangkok, we mm. we did not see as much. Mm. I mean, we have seen some. Like yesterday, mm -hmm. like last night, there was a heavy thunderstorm, mm. but no more than you know that would cause such a big, big impact, like in in uh, in Thai province or in Chiang Rai or Chiang Mai.
It's troubling when road ca got cut off. Yeah, several, obviously. So at this point, brace yourself for that. It seems like we're going to get hit again. Right. OK, mm -hmm. so right now we're going to take a short break. Yes. We'll come back. We have some news from the south, of course, mm -hmm. never really much of a good news. Right. And also the budget uh, debate, the yes. debate on the budget, and also the reform panel. More updates on that. Don't go anywhere.